those things were the small tip for the material properties. So, and uh, this session is about frequently asked questions from Global Technical Center on MIDA Cebu. So I brought the three questions regarding my uh, material properties. So let's go through it. The first query is why does the design report show different elasticity modulus? The elasticity modulus in material data isn't used. So as you, we know, the, if we select concrete steel, steel or SRC material, the standard can be selected and uh, the imported material, material will be taken over to the design feature. So the, the user uh, guess that this, uh, this elasticity modulus will be used for the design calculation. But uh, so the user entered uh, 29,725 megapascal for the elast elasticity modulus. But uh, after generating the Excel design report, the design report showed 3,259 megapascal. So why these differences happened? The key, word, key is the non-type in the standard. The user selected non-type non in the standard, so he needed to input values to define the concrete material for design. So based on the specific compressive strength here, so he inputted the her, uh, his value here. The elasticity modulus were calculated according to the formula in Ashto code here. So I got handy calculation results as a, uh, so I followed this equation to uh, calculate the elasticity modulus. So I got handy calculation results as the same as the elasticity modulus in the design reports, like this. So this is another case to verify this issue. So I selected a material data in the standard, like this. So after that, I checked the material data was selected for the design. So. So for the design, the same material uh, was used. And as you can see, the, the elasticity in the report and the material dialog are the same. So all of the I got the same elasticity modulus. So therefore, we should check each material option in design feature if we get unexpected material in the design report. Because the design report, uh, to calculate design, uh, we have to input the material for design mode in the modified concrete material or, or other PSC design material like this. Okay, uh, this is the second query. So case question was, uh, why do we select material proper properties again? when we define composite or SRC section. So as you can see, the MIDA CBL provides the composite section and SRC section. Advantages of those sections are that uh, we can get section properties in before composite and after composite easily. And if we have a construction stage analysis, we can define the construction sequences in the same model file. So these sections have the material option that is highlighted here. So we have to select the material here. Okay. So let's, let's check the meaning of each symbol. So the E, you can, you can see the E. E means the elasticity modulus or gutter and steel and the slab like this, concrete. 
and the P means the P means the Poisson ratio, and the D means the weight density, and the last one is T. T means thermal coefficient. Okay, let's check the reason. The first reason why we select material properties again is to calculate section properties considering a material in subsection simply. So after selecting the material, the this uh, composite or SRC uh, section dialog will calculate their section properties after before the composite and after composite. So if you want to check. Uh, that section properties, click the show calculation results. So based on the material or the ratio, the, this value will be calculated. So the ratio of elastic modulus and Poisson ratio and weight density is used to calculate the section properties like uh, area and moment of inertia and centroid of centroid position of section and etc after composite work and this is more description about the ratio of weight density so when we create elements that have a composite section we can assign only one material into the elements so so software needs information about subsection. Subsection means in this case the slab section. So because of that, we need to input the ratio of weight density and thermal coefficient. So this figure shows an example regarding the ratio of weight density. So if the ratio is zero, the part two, which means the slab part here is not counted as the as a weight force, self weight force. Okay. And uh, this is the ratio of thermal coefficient. So this option is used for specific function called the beam section temperature load. Through this option, we can consider the thermal gradient of section. So here is a simple, a short calculation for comparison of thermal coefficient. So in order to compare the effect of the thermal coefficient ratio in the composite section, I prepared this quick uh, handy calculation. So as a result, the results show the different value according to the ratio of thermal coefficient. So this case is thermal coefficient ratio is one, and this case is two. So those cases show the difference, the reaction here. And the last query, query is which material should I assign to the element if I have uh, many material properties and have a construction stage analysis. So we can discuss this issue in two cases. So case number one is considering the composite section without the com construction stage analysis. So in this case, assign the material or main part such like uh, such like as a gutter and the uh, sub part will be recalculated with the ratio material in the section to define equivalent transformed section. So in this case, the main member, ma uh, main part is the gutter section and sub part is slab. And case number two is considering the composite section with the construction stage analysis. Uh, when we consider the construction stage analysis, we use compose, composite section for construction stage option, like this. Because, uh, 
because we uh, because this option uh, have to see the construction sequences of the composite section. So in this option, we need to select material types again to assign different material to each part here. So each part means the girder slab or other other things. And the section properties will be recalculated using this material again. So we can check their stiffness or the properties value here. So therefore, the method of case number one will be ignored. But uh, it would be good to know which material is assigned it to elements because the material type here, material, in the in this option has two types the uh, material and elements so if you select the material type uh, the part one will have the number one material type and uh, if you select the element type part two will have uh, material which uh, which is assigned it to the element here okay this is the last contents of this webinar. So MIDA, so MIDA Civil provides material properties for advanced analysis cases, such like uh, dynamic analysis and the nonlinear analysis. So today we will take a look at, at each option briefly due to the time limit. And uh, we, will we will see the more deeply uh, in the another webinar. Let's see. So first one is plastic material properties. So when we define the material properties, we can see the plastic data option at the middle of the dialog. Well, let's see. Here, we have plastic material name here. So if we need to check plastic behavior of structure model, select select a plastic material. So we can define the plastic material um, in the plastic material function. And this option provides several uh, model to, uh, to consider the plastic material type. Okay. And uh, this is this is uh, in elastic material properties for fiber model. So in design bridge design field, this option could be considered when we have the nonlinear seismic analysis that includes in elastic material properties. Oh, oops. Yes, like this. So fiber model means the the program the divide this section and take over the the element section here and then the software divide divide each section as a stale cell and uh, the software will assign the nonlinear material properties into the steel cell or concrete cell and the reinforcement cell like this okay so Next one is thermal transfer option. Uh, this option will be used uh, when we have heat transfer analysis and thermal stress analysis like this. But uh, yeah, uh, in my decibel, well, the, we can do the heat transfer analysis and thermal stress analysis uh, via the heat of hydration function. So you can find this function in the load tab and uh, on the next side, we can find heat of hydration. So these are the, about the trans thermal transfer option. Okay, let's move on. Okay, really, really last one. Yeah. So last one is damping ratio. The damping ratio is inputted automatically when we define the material property. So and and you can see this option at the bottom of the dialog. So let's go back. Okay. 
here is the damping ratio here. Okay. So the damping ratio is used for the dynamic analysis, such as the response spectrum analysis and the time history analysis, and etc. So various methods for the damping ratio is provide provided for the dynamic analysis in my decibel. So uh, when we considered using group group damping option that that assigns the same damping ratio as per materials, sections, and boundaries. The 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 damping ratio in the met in the material properties will be used. Okay, so you can find the damp group damping in the under the properties menu, and here is group damping. So there are two two methods for the group damping. So if you should select the material data here, so you can select each material properties here. Okay. Okay, so today uh, we have a time to walk through about material properties function in my decibel. So I hope it was informative and helpful to you.